What is most valuable in your life? <coughs> Think about that for a moment. Is it your life? In our world today, we have tragedy. The unveiling of the senseless deaths in Norway in the past days. And truly, our hearts and prayers go out to the people of Oslo in their loss, in their grief, and for understanding grace and strength in this darkest of times. There's an old gospel song that says, Where do you turn but to the Lord? Some of you may have heard this name before, quoted in this pulpit over the years. The great preacher William Sloan Coffin, who went to Riverside Church uh, after Norman Vincent Peale, had his son die tragically, who drowned in a car accident at the age of 26. Well-meaning people told Reverend Coffin, it's God's will. It's for the best. Some just told him they cared. One lady brought, it seemed like, 36 quiches day after day after day to his home. She said, Pastor William, I just baked and baked until I felt better, until I thought I had something to bring, and then I came. Preacher William was out of the pulpit for about a month, but then his first Sunday back after his son's death, he graciously thanked the people for all their well-meaning gifts, for their expressions of remorse. And then he said he felt that he'd been a failure as a preacher. He said these words. For some reason, nothing so infuriates me as the incapacity of seemingly intelligent people to get it through their heads that God doesn't go through this world with his fingers on triggers, his fists around knives, his hands around steering wheel, and God is dead set against all unnatural deaths. Christ spent an inordinate amount of time delivering people from paralysis, insanity, leprosy, and muteness. It is not to say there are no nature-caused deaths, and many people here Pastor William said in the five years he had been there, had deaths that were untimely, slow, painful, and which various reasons raised unanswerable questions. But the specter of a communist, or, I'm sorry, a cosmic sadist? Absolutely not. But in violent deaths such as his son Alex, he went on to say, it is simply this, as his younger, said, younger son said at the casket of the funeral there that they held in Boston, Brother, you just blew it. You blew it. I was told my kids, you can violate the laws of driving and maybe get away with it. You cannot violate the laws of physics. And if you turn your car faster than the coefficient of friction of the pavement and the material your tires are made out of is greater than that, you will slide and a vehicle and an object going in one direction will tend to keep going in that direction and therefore you will slide off the road. A couple of weeks after our son's high school graduation, he tried to turn on a gravel road, a 90 degree turn at 45 miles an hour, and he found that what I indeed had said was true. My son, like us, makes a lot of friends. He had made a friend with a tow truck driver who brought him home quietly during the night. It was quiet until the tow truck backed up. And those of you who know federal safety regulations know the tow truck began to go beep, beep, beep. And also because the tow truck driver did not want to break any laws, had his yellow swirling lights on. So the whole neighborhood was lit up with yellow swirling lights and beep, beep, beep. I went down to look at the car. I said, what happened? He said, I missed a turn. I was relieved he was alive. I was furious he had done that. And as only our son could do, the front driver's side wheel was bent underneath the driver's side door. My son looked at it 
And he said, I believe we can hammer that out. <laughs> what brings you comfort in times of great loss? Mark Schuderman, I'm sure, has heard this prayer many, many times, but have you ever taken, now this will take you back a ways, but when you had records, 33 RPM records, did you ever slow one down and listen to it at a different speed? Sometimes if we unpack the words of things that we've heard very quickly or repetitively, if we unpack them slowly, it makes a difference. God of us all, God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you, and to you with your church on earth and in heaven. We offer honor and glory now and forever. The liturgy goes on with a commendation prayer. As I read it and I thought about it, I thought, you know, it's not just a prayer for one who is leaving this life. It's also a prayer for us to remind us of how to live our lives. So if we take a person's name out of it and simply put the word life into it, it reads like this. Oh God, all you have given us is yours. As first you gave life to us. Now we give our lives back to you. Receive us and raise us into new life. What if every day we decided that we wanted to live life like it was a new life, a new beginning? Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. The liturgy goes on with a prayer of thanksgiving. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day for the gift of joy in days of health and strength, for the gift of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for our home, for our friends, for our faith, for our place in your church with all who have faithfully lived died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death, and rose for our sake, who lives and prays for us. And then it continues on with the Lord's Prayer. Jesus, too, suffered in his life. Did you miss it, as David read a few moments ago? One of the first lessons that I learned in biblical studies was look for the who, the what, the where, the why, and the how of those carryover phrases. Matthew 14, 13 says what? When Jesus heard this, when Jesus heard what? He withdrew from in a boat to a lonely place, but the crowds heard it. They followed him on foot. When Jesus heard what? He heard that his cousin, John the Baptist, had not only died, but had been beheaded at the whim of a spoiled child princess. Jesus truly suffered a devastating grief and a loss 
And what did Jesus do? Jesus withdrew to rebuild, to find himself. Do you remember the movie City Slickers? Some of you may have seen that. A group of professionals jaded by life, trying to find their smile again on a cowboy ride. One of the city slicker men, Mitch, the one who brought home a pet steer, not too practical, had an in interesting conversation with an old cowboy, Curly, played by Jack Palance. It went something like this. Curly said, do you know what the secret of life is? And he held up his finger pointing to the sky. This. Mitch said, your finger? No. One thing. Just one thing. Stick to that one thing, and the rest don't mean anything. Mitch said, but what is the one thing? Curly smiled and said, that's what you have to find out. And the scripture tells us that one found a pearl, one found a treasure in a land, and they everything else they set aside, they sold, they got rid of so that they could get this one great thing. Jesus, surrounded again by people with needs, called upon God for strength and grace, for the gifts of joy, an abiding presence and promise, praising his Father for home and friends and faith, and for remembering again who he was, what he was called to do, and whose he was. And then Jesus taught and fed them spiritually and physically. I was visiting last night with my Aunt Margie in Florida. Called her on the telephone. She turned 92 yesterday. She has lived a good and full life, and she said, I am ready. I pray every night. If it's my time, God, take me home. But otherwise, she said, I'm still here. She said, I was married happily to your Uncle Bill. She said, you know, I've now been widowed more years than I was married. She lived her life as a widow, first in New York and then in Florida, but not living an empty, unhappy, or lonely life. Margie became active in her church, and she ran the church thrift store, the local church. She helped assemble the newsletter. She helped put together the weekly church bulletin and kept things running smoothly around the church. She was one of the core saints of the church, one of the pillars of the church. But as her body weakened and she couldn't keep up the pace, she's given up some of the things, but she said, I still keep an eye on things. <coughs> Margie had a choice. She could feel sorry for herself, or she could turn her loss into a gain or a benefit for others. How many saints of God here have experienced loss in your life? Loved ones, family, friends. Most all of us. But what do we do with it? What do we do with those losses in our lives? Do you remember John H. Samus' words of that old favorite hymn, Trust and Obey? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey.